Good everyone, lots on the program tonight. We begin with what may be the most unusual accident we've ever covered. So unusual that it almost beggars belief, really. It involves an Aportiki truck driver. The 48-year-old was standing on the plate between the cab and the truck's trailer when he slipped, falling onto a brass valve connecting the compressed air supply with the truck's brakes. The valve pierced his skin, forcing air into his body, and basically, in fact literally, blowing him up like a balloon. Had his colleagues not been there, exactly like an overflated balloon, he basically would have popped. But alive, very grateful for the fact, and back to his normal size, he spoke exclusively with Natasha Utting. In a matter of minutes, my body blew to twice the size. I could only just see out of one eye. Just a moment off balance, a simple slip on the back of his truck. And as he went down, the, the nipple of the, of the, of the uh, air tank um, uh, became embedded in, in his buttocks. As he fell, Stephen McCormick broke the hose that connects the compressed air tank to his truck's brakes. Its valve entered his body and began pumping it full of air. The sensation was like when you're diving and you get the bends and you have to go back down to let the air pressure come off your body when you're diving. But there was no water. I just had to put up with the pressure from the air tank exploding into me. But he became more and more distressed and his whole body, his face, his eyes started to close and his whole body started to swell. It turned different colours, it turned quite, um, quite bloatish looking like a balloon. There was nothing Stephen could do. I heard the sound of the air going into me and the vehicles and that travelling around me but the people wouldn't come near me because of what they could see wasn't a very nice sight. The air travelled through Stephen's body under his skin. It rushed into all its nooks and crannies, inflating his abdomen, his chest, filling the space around his heart, travelling into his lungs and even into his eyelids. My left hand side eye I couldn't even see out of. It blew up that much in a matter of minutes after it went in. Air compressed to 100 pounds per square inch was simply blowing Stephen up. Yeah, yeah, I knew what was happening, that the air was pumping into me and I had to do something about it and they tried to pull me down off the truck and they pulled me up and I told them they had to pull me upwards to get me off the hook that I hooked on. I didn't realise that the air, the air was going to his body, it came around and, and switched the uh, to the, um, the exit of the, of the air, but he would have got half of the air in the tank uh, into, his, into his body through his lower, lower buttocks. Three co-workers came to his aid. We couldn't get him off the, the nipple because of the, the angle of the, uh, it acted like a, a hook, fish hook, and we, uh, we had one hang of a job to, to get him off the, the nipple. And I was almost crying said to Jason Gwynn and if, we don't, if they don't hurry up I'm gonna die. But Stephen had an agonising wait ahead. It was a full hour until paramedics arrived. They went to put a drip in me and they pushed the needle in and it spat the needle out. Went to put air in my, up my nostril with a hose to keep you alive and it wouldn't go. They rushed him to Whakatane Hospital. Something like four or five doctors worked on him um, and uh, putting um, a hose in his, through his um, ribs into his lungs to get him to breathe because the, the, air, the compressed air was stopping him breathing. The rest of the air had to leave Stephen's body in the way air usually does. You're just in intensive care and you just got to wait for the swelling to go down. You can't turn a tap on and let it out. It goes in your natural form of burping, farting, the un, 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 things that you're not meant to be doing when everybody else is around, but under the circumstances, they, they knew what was happening. So you just had to fart it out or burp it out, and it took about three days before I'd come back to the normal size. 
This is the pressure that Stephen experienced. This is the power of 100 pounds per square inch of air, strong enough to explode a tire. His recovery is remarkable. There was no broken bones, no bruises, just a big hole in the back of my leg from the air shooting into me. 47 years of contracting, I hope that I don't see that again. Stephen knows his colleagues saved his life. Freedom, mate. And all that hot air hasn't deflated his love for the job. I really feel like the Michelin man. 